Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today I want to demonstrate how to overclock NVIDIA EVGA cards for mining. Uh, so I think what most people think of when they think about overclocking a card is getting the absolute maximum performance out of a card. And while that's good for gaming, uh, and it could be good for mining if you have free electricity, it's not necessarily what you want to do if you're paying for your electricity. I use a specific miner with my NVIDIA cards because it seems to be the most efficient miner that I can find. It's called EWBF. I believe it was made by the people who made Nanopool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit one of these batch files. So this is my... Uh, mining address for the fly pool. And I believe this is uh, Zcash, yeah, Zcash. When you're starting your miner, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna add dash dash PEC to your EWBF miner. Now this, this won't work for any other miner. So if you're using uh, Claymore or one of the other miners, they have different command line options and this is not a thing, right? But for EWBF, dash dash PEC is really useful. I'll show you how that works. So we'll start up the fly pool miner. All right, I have two 1080 Ti's in this machine. And you can see that the dash dash PEC uh, command line option gives me this nice little chart that shows me my power usage per card. So card zero is drawing 246 watts, card one is drawing roughly 256 watts, right? And then, and this is the important part, it gives you the efficiency per watt. So it says 2.77 souls per watt for these two cards. Now, what you want to do if you want to get the absolute maximum profit out of your cards, if you're paying for electricity, is you want to raise this efficiency as far as you possibly can. With NVIDIA cards, it seems like the best way, I've tried this on 970s, 980 Ti's, and these 1080 Ti's, and it seems like universally the best way to do that is just to drop this power target down to 65%. If you go any lower than that, you might have some system instability. You might have a little bit of system instability at 65%, but if you're just doing a part-time miner, like you, you mine in the evenings after you've gone to bed or something, this should be fine. Uh, and so we'll hit apply here. And the other thing you want to do is you want to raise up your fan curves. Uh, they start off in auto like this. And you can see that they, they're down here at the bottom. And what that does is it raises your temperature across the board. So these, these temperatures will start going up pretty quickly. So what you want to do is you want to raise these temperatures up to at least 70%, maybe up, up to 80%. I think I do 80 usually. And it depends on the card that you have. Mine are uh, hybrid cards, so they're water-cooled. But I like to have my, my fan speeds up around 80, and it keeps my temperatures nice and cool on both cards. So you can see, now that we've done that, now that we've dropped our power target to 65%, our efficiency goes all the way up to 4.0 souls per watt. And the power usage per card goes down to 160 watts per card. Uh, and it'll fluctuate, it'll, it'll go anywhere from about 3.5 souls per watt to 4.2 souls per watt, but it's much higher than it was before. So what that means is that for a given amount of electricity, you are performing more work with less electricity. And that's what you want for mining. That'll give you the biggest uh, return. So the other thing that you can do uh, is you can bump the GPU clock offset a little bit. I, I haven't found, like a lot of cards, you'll find uh, some benefits by changing the memory clock offset. But with the Equihash uh, encryption algorithm, which is what uh, Zcash and Hush and, and all of those coins use, uh, I haven't found any benefit to changing the memory clock. But what I have found is a little bit of benefit to bumping the GPU clock. So I can bump this as high as about 134 if I have a single 1080 Ti in the, in the system. But with two 1080 Ti's, I don't really like to go higher than 60 uh, megahertz of boost clock or clock overclocking. So once I've done that, uh, I should start seeing slightly higher efficiency ratings. And, and so this is how you check to see if the change that you're making has a positive effect or a negative effect. You just watch these charts fly by as you're mining. 
And so if, if it seems like it's on average a little bit higher, then, you know, then you're good, right? Now, what will happen is if you have instability in your system, say you, say you bump this up to like 200 or something, um, you'll either start getting warnings from Windows over here saying that the miner can't contact the GPU or your display will start blanking out or you know, you'll, you'll start having all kinds of weird problems. The, the worst thing that can happen is it'll completely lock up your machine and you'll have to reboot. Uh, don't panic if any of that happens, just, you know, if you can, lower it back down and try again with a, with a different setting. I've noticed that with, with these settings, 65% power target and 60% or 60 megahertz of additional GPU clock, sometimes when I come back to the machine, the display won't come on if it's been off for a while. Usually it's still mining. I've only had it ever stop mining completely once, and I think that was because Windows went down uh, to install an update. So usually it won't lock the machine entirely and it'll continue mining, but I'll have to reboot the machine because I can't get my display back so that I can you know, get in, log into Windows and you know, make changes and do whatever and stop the miner or whatever. Um, so there is some instability in that respect, but it's not, you know, for a part-time miner, it's not terrible, right? If you were running all of these in a farm, uh, you might have to run more conservative settings than this because you probably want your uptime to be measured in like hundreds of days rather than like hours, right? But you can be more aggressive if you're just a part-time miner like me. Anyway, hope that was useful. Uh, if you found it useful, please hit the, uh, the like button down below. Um, I'll probably be doing some more mining videos in the future, so if you're into that sort of thing, uh, please, by all means, hit the subscribe button. I have a link down below the video in the description down there to uh, the 1080 Ti's, so if you want to pick up a couple of those 1080 Ti's, uh, go ahead. They are affiliate links, so if you click on them, I get a small commission, but it doesn't cost you a dime extra. It just helps me support the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.